My name is Howie Chosit. I'm a professor here in the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon. My lab is the Biorobotics Lab. What we do in this lab is we look at complex, high-dimensional problems and reduce them to simpler ones for the purposes of mechanism design, analysis, and planning. We develop really great algorithms and robots which are able to achieve capabilities that conventional robots otherwise cannot. We've sent robots into caverns in Egypt for archaeology. We've done search and rescue. We've gone to nuclear power plants. We've taken them into surgery. We actually look at biology for cues. That's why we're called the biorobotics lab. But lately, our research has been doing the opposite. By taking the fundamental recourse to understand and analyze these robots, we're actually telling biologists how their systems work. I think my research group is most famous for snake robots. Now these mechanisms are great. What they are are highly articulated mechanisms that can thread through tightly packed volumes and get to locations that people and machinery otherwise can't access. Now this automatically instills some applications. Urban search and rescue. Can we give rescue workers a tool that will allow them to extend their sensory reach so they can locate uh, victims more quickly? Uh, recently, we've been getting into sending these robots into nuclear facilities. Right now, being able to inspect the pipes and the, and the other structures inside of a nuclear facility is very time-consuming and expensive. With these robots, we can expedite and lower the cost of this operation. If we shrink these robots down to a small size, we can actually do minimally invasive surgery. The benefits of minimally invasive surgery are profound. It's less pain on the patient, it costs less, and the patient returns to normal life more quickly. The problem with minimally invasive surgery is that either you have rigid laparoscopes uh, that can only access points within line of sight of the incision, or you have endoscopes, they're flexible but they buckle easily. A surgical snake robot inherits the benefits of both. So now you can perform a whole host of therapies and diagnostics that otherwise weren't possible. Take for example a cardiac procedure. Instead of splitting the sternum to do a cardiac operation, now you can make a small incision, the robot can make a 25 millimeter turn one way, another 25 millimeter turn the other way, and we're behind the heart delivering a host of therapies and diagnostics. Now I'm very proud to say that this technology has been commercialized and through that company we've already been able to operate on people. Over the years in building these modular snake robots, we got very good at building modular systems. Recently we built a walking robot. It looks like a spider, but it only has six legs. We call it Snake Monster because it's snake robots coming out of a central box. It can crawl over rubble, does all sorts of wonderful things. But to me, what I find most impressive about this crawling robot is that it only took us two weeks to build and program. We went and figured out the right building blocks, the right modules that would allow the robot designer, the robot builder, just to focus on the high level capabilities and be able to design, build, and deploy this robot very quickly. I see my lab's future moving more and more into manufacturing. This modular architecture that we developed will allow somebody to program and deploy this robot in a very small fraction of time, and then if they want to make changes, it's not going to be a problem. And I see this idea of lowering the barriers that will allow more people to integrate robots into manufacturing a future of our lab. So the Robotics Institute is a special place. What binds us together is that we're very passionate about building robots. But I think our research tends to be multidisciplinary, and we always have this focus on a grounded problem. We really believe building robots, building systems, getting them out in the field is what really drives our fundamental research.